Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we were singing, I surrender all. Uh, no response. I surrender all. How many of us really, really come to Jesus and surrender? Surrender is a word which is used in the military. And I surrender. Either surrender or I will kill you. That's it. That's the final. Amen. Surrender. I surrender. I surrender or are we realistic? Are we realistic before God? Yesterday I mentioned. You know a person who is really surrendered to Jesus will not have his own way or her own way. Everything will be Jesus' way. Will be Jesus' way. He will command. You know that when the enemy is surrender, Hallelujah. When the enemy is surrendering, Hallelujah. He will lift up his hands and say, "I surrender." Hallelujah. And the chief commander will take. He will say, "Bite your arms. Turn backward." Go follow somebody or something either to the day or to a concentration. That's it. Surrender means when you surrender to Jesus Christ, we are singing. It's good. I like it. I love it. But once we surrender to Jesus, the next moment onwards, we will be led up by the Holy Spirit. That's what we sang. All to Jesus I surrender. Make me Savior. Holy time. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. That is the reality. That is the reality. Where when we are surrendering. You know, there are people who surrender to God. Hallelujah. There are people in the Bible who surrender to God. Hallelujah. In the New Testament, Hallelujah, Paul, he surrendered finally. He was going on, he was thinking on his own way. He thought that Jesus, either he will escape or he will escape this martyrdom and then so many things and or he will come back as a king and then rule. That's why one mother went and asked, oh, my, one of my sons should sit in your left and other one in the right. <coughs> Their plan was entirely different from God's plan. But Jesus was a person who surrendered to the Father and he was only my 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 food is obeying to the Father, the will of the Father. That's what Jesus said. And Paul, uh, sorry, uh, Peter, Peter. If you read John 21, you will see Peter. After resurrection, Jesus met Peter. <coughs> see that encounter where, hallelujah, on John 21, where Jesus met Peter again. And he asked them, Barjona Simon, Barjona Simon, do you love me? Say which is the reference 21? 15. 15. Yes, 21 15. Yeah, open your Bible and see at least John 21 15. <laughs> no, this is a time where Malayalam people are learning English. If you could not learn English all these years, every day I speak something in English. And if you could not speak or if you could not understand, if you could not read. I'm sorry, I have to say shame. You know, at least you, you people might have heard that Italian nuns singing in Malayalam. Italian nuns were singing in 
Malayalam. That means other languages people are learning. But I know that there are people uh, among us or in and around us those who could not accept the English version. I thank for this. Thank God for this session. We are reading. Barajan and Shimon. Simon Peter. Yes. Do you love me more than this? Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Yes. He said to him, feed my lambs. If you really love me, then feed my lamb. This is where we have to show that we are loving Jesus. Take care of the lamb. We are feeble either we are not able to take care of our own children. Long time we are there, we say we are surrender, I surrender. God made Peter to surrender again. Ask him. Second time, he asked Peter, Peter. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord. Yes. You know that I love you. He yes. said to him, then my sheep. Yes. Again, there are deep meaning in there. I don't have time to, I think I, I may have to ask the pastor in this church to give me a few more minutes uh, so that I can continue close this session. Yes. Third time. He said to him the third time. Amen. Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Amen. Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time. Peter, when he heard the third time, do you love me more than these people? Do you love me more than these things? Do you love me more than anything? And the third time when Jesus asked Peter, Peter was grieved. He was grieved in his heart. That boy. Jesus is asking me, he knows me very well, but he knows very well that Peter can be slipped any time from the love of God and he can go astray. And Jesus said that, you know, the devil has asked me to sift you like, like wheat many times, but I did not leave you to be sifted by the devil because I know that your faith will be lost. My dear brothers and sisters, this is the real surrender where Peter did it. That is why Peter was asking, my master was crucified. I want to be dying on foot up and head down. And that is the real surrender from that moment onward. You know, when we say anointed and we say we surrendered, we say we are led by the Holy Spirit. All those things have a reality is entirely different from what we are. I want all of you to come back. I know I can, I, I, I know that most of the people in here understand this. A second person who surrendered was Paul. In Acts 9, we see Paul. And he was going on his own way. He was thinking that he was right and he is doing a service to the Lord. 9-4. Read 9-4. Acts 9-4. Then he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him. I mean, this is where he surrendered. So he was a mighty man. He has so many things to boast. He was the son of a ship owner. He got a higher education, like a, a, a PhD from Alexandria University. And that man, hallelujah, he was having a letter in his hand to persecute every Christian. And he was going on the way to Damascus, where Jesus met him. He fell down then. And he heard a voice saying to him, Amen. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? You know, it's a double call, Saul, Saul. In the word of God, there are many places where are double call, some emergency call when Abraham, uh, he was sacrificing Isaac. 
God, it was an emergency call or a split second is enough to kill that son where God called him, Abraham, Abraham, don't do it. I am not pleased in manslaughter. That's God. My dear children, we should know the heart of God. We should know what he has planned for us. We should know how he is planning to purge us. If God wanted to use any one of our, us, he will definitely allow us to go through fiery fireness where he will be purging. And as Peter says, if we are purged, we will come out as pure gold. If you surrender, if you are a person who is surrendered to the Lord, he will be led by and then uh, read four, four, five, six and all from men. And he said, who are you, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. This is the world, this is the world where, you know, especially youngsters in this new generation is all asking a question, who is Jesus? Why I should follow him? Why I have to serve him? Why I have to surrender? All these questions arise from the youngsters, the new generation. The same question was raised by Saul. And Saul is asking, who are you? Who are you, Jesus? How far we know Jesus? How far we travel with him? How far we suck with him? How far we know the heart of Jesus? What he is expecting from us? What he wants to do with your life? Read it. It is there. It is there. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Yeah. Every day we are doing that. When we hate our brothers, we hate our sisters, we keep away from them, we go on our own. We get into our comfort zone. We get into like a shell. Retrieve ourselves and get into our selfishness and say, Lord, I surrender. I love you. I love your people. All those things we say, past five words we know. But real surrender. Paul did it and then what happened? So he trembling and as God has said, Lord, what do you want me to do? Amen. Who are you, Jesus? And Jesus said, I am the one whom you are persecuting. You are thinking that you are doing a good thing to the Christianity. You are doing a good thing to the Jews. And But that persecuted Jesus is me. I have come to confront you. Let Jesus confront our life. You allow Jesus to confront in your life and he will make you, hallelujah, surrender. And once you surrender, he will use you, he will empty you, and he will fill you, and he will use you. Praise the Lord. No response comes from you, people. That's why I am more grieved. Because we are not able to surrender. We are looking for the passion of this world. We are looking for so many things. We are looking for the future. We are looking and we are coming to know about the spiritual arena which is in and around you, which is all in calamity, where Jesus is not there. And to the, to the last church, the John is writing to the last church. He said, I'm Jesus, I'm standing outside the door and knocking. If anybody hear my voice and open the door, I will suck with him and he will suck with me. Why? To the last generation. I think we are the last generation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pentecostal belief cannot go any more further without the anointing, a special anointing from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We are proud that we are Pentecostal. I am proud that I am anointed by the Holy Spirit. There are, I think most of the people are 
two quarters of baptism. You know, your next stage is to get anointed by the Holy Spirit and to be led by the Holy Spirit. We say that we are anointed. Hallelujah. If I ask, are you, are you anointed by the Holy Spirit? You shake your head and say, yes, yes, yes. But the strength which the Holy Spirit gives is not in us. And I have to doubt what kind of anointing we have. You know when people who are singing, clapping, and long time doing that, they get into a, 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 a kind of uh, anointing. They say, believe that it is an anointing. But it is all in the flesh, the body, and the soul, and the spirit. Things which go into the spirit, only God will accept. That is only through the word of God. We jump and we dance and we do a lot of things and we make a howl and we make a lot of noise and all those things and we believe that it is all from the Holy Spirit. But it is all in the body, body and the soul. Only these two areas are working. Only these two areas will work. The third area deep into and Jesus was asking Peter to the third time the word get into the deep of Peter's heart and he was grieved when the word of God is spoken to you. How many of us are grieved when Jesus is speaking to us, when the anointing is coming? How many of us are really grieved that Lord, I could not do, I am not that man who is present here. I, there is an inner man in me and that man has to be used by the Holy Spirit. You know, this is the effect of surrendering. How many of us are really surrendered to the will of God? That tomorrow, tomorrow, if God is planning me, sending me. You know, Paul, the next day, almost, after his anointing, hallelujah, after his encounter with Jesus, on the way to the Muslim, he was a different person. Peter, after the anointing, Peter was a different person. He said, I don't know Jesus. I was not with him. You are a mad woman. This was all the words from him. But after this encounter, Peter stood. He was anointed by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit came upon them, those who are waiting. And then in one preaching, thousands how turn to Jesus Christ. This is the effect of surrender. Only a person who is surrendered, Paul, with all his might and power, he surrendered to Jesus. And then he was ready due to the glory and the excellency of Jesus Christ revealed in me. I count everything tongue and ashes. Any gilaf of my little cream, young Christo never come, chair the man. Namakilaf of my little care. Sorry, what all things are profitable to us? What all things are profitable to us? Yeah, count, count them, count them and see. Are you a surrendered person? If you are a surrendered person, next moment the Holy Spirit will start working in you and the Holy Spirit will lead you. You will be 100% in the hands of the Lord and God will guide you, take you to wherever he wants to. Paul was led by the Holy Spirit. Peter was led by the Holy Spirit. And the servants of God are all to be led by the Holy Spirit where God wants to take you. And the final destination is those who are surrendered will overcome the death. Hallelujah. Even overcoming the death, that is the last enemy. And every enemy will be hallelujah, under our feet. And uh, there are so many things to mention in that one. Hallelujah. One surrender. Sickness is no more there. Those who for a surrender person. A feeble body may be there. Aged body may be there. But no sickness will overrule you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I think the third song is already. Hallelujah. In heaven, the earth, we lend the land.
back and do it all together. Yeah. Without armor, without armor, 
many have perished because the armor is not there. In the armor, the first one is helmet of salvation. Do we are sure that I am saved? My name is in the book of the Lamb. Are we sure about it? Or at times we are not. <coughs> we are called to be in the warfare. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody read Isaiah 54, 17. Formed against Malayalam, read, read the references so that at least you will understand. There will not be much time today for uh, long messages. <coughs> Hallelujah, our guest pastor is there and the uh, worship testimony, so many things to take place. But I know with purpose I am speaking now, so I may take few minutes more. Yes, no weapons. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Read it in English. Yes, that's it. Uh, others to understand. Yes. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon that is fashioned against us shall stand. How many of us believe? No response. My Arab reading also no response. English reading also no response. That means the weapon which is coming against you, the arrows which is coming against you, you are not seeing it. You are not standing against it. You are not having the armor to stand against the wiles of the devil, the weapons of the devil. And when David was going to Goliath, he saw Goliath standing there. You know that he has much armor with him. He has supporters with him. He has a big sword with him. He has a breastplate. He has a helmet. All those things David saw. But spiritually, David was having a strong armor which was his anointing. His anointing. To counterfeit against the armors of Goliath. David was having armors. These are spiritual armors which nobody knows. Otherwise he will not have that strength to go and face him. The anointing makes him make him strong. The anointing makes him powerful. The anointing make him to stand against the wives of the devil. And you and me need that anointing so that you will overcome the world. Overcome the sin. Overcome the flesh. Overcome the wives of the enemy. And the word of God say, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. How many of you believe? You know, there are young people dying in Kerala, in every, 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 every corner of Kerala. If you take 10 of the Malayala Manorama uh, news every day, which is printed from 10 different districts, you take in each Malayala Manorama, there are minimum 10 youngsters facing death or accident and getting into coma. It's a very important thing. We have the great preaching in Kerala. Preachers also there. Preaching so many things. Which is all nice to the ear. Nice to hear. Wonderful things happening. On the other hand, the devil is killing and looting and destroying the youngsters, young blood in the society. 
Who is standing against? Who speak against? Nobody is there to speak against. Nobody is mindful of that. Untimely death. Untimely death. Behind every untimely death, the evil powers are working. And Jesus said in John 10, 10, I have come to give you life and life in its abundance. The life, life in its abundance. And the other fellow has come what, for what? To kill and destroy and loot. It is a time for spiritual people to rise up and stand against the wives of the moon. Speak against. <laughs> you know, when the enemy shall come like a flood, day 59, uh, one more word to so Jeremiah 51 20. Jeremiah 51 20. You are my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you I will destroy kingdoms. Now the axe is there. But the sharp end is not there. You are the battle axe. How many of you and me are willing to speak against the evil powers of darkness which is prevailing? You are the battle axe and then? And weapons of war. Weapons of war. Yes. For with you I will break the for with you I will break the nations in pieces. Yeah. With you I will destroy kingdoms. Yeah. That's why the battle axe is given. The battle axe is given for that to destroy certain things. Destroy certain land, certain rulers, certain rules which against coming against us. How many of you are willing to stand against the rules which are coming against the children of God? Yes. Hallelujah. Maybe the decision of a government, maybe the decision of a king. How many of you are willing to stand against those rules, those powers of darkness? Read Isaiah 59 19 also. When the enemy shall come like a flood, God shall raise up a standard by his own spirit. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, yes. the spirit of the Lord will lift up the standard against him. Yeah, that's the real. It is a King James Version. The original version. I was reading New International Version this morning. Hallelujah. It is the meaning of something that is different. But you know when the enemy shall come like a flood, and you know the flesh which happened in Kerala. The enemy will come like a flesh. And will be doing to everybody. Especially spiritual people. Spiritual people are now going after so many things. They have no time to pray. No time to break their heart. And for the perishing, nobody is mindful about it. And I, 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 I pray to you people, please get up and rise against the evil powers of darkness and stand against the wives of the devil with the armor of God. With the armor of God. Hallelujah. We say we are, we are children of God. That is true. Those who are born in a Pentecostal family, they are really children of God. They are anointed by the Holy Spirit. God knows. God knows. Hallelujah. When people are dying untimely, I doubt so much. And I am standing against. And every day I pray, Lord, Lord, from our gathering, from our people, churches in UAE, church in Kerala, no more youngsters will be looted by the devil. How many of you understand this? How many of you are willing to pray for? Break your heart. Tears. Let tears come out. Hallelujah. Morning woman, raise up from the congregation. 
Everybody clap your hands and worship the Lord for a few minutes. 